Ooh, we get to go on the grass? Oh man, we're going on the grass? This day just got a hundred times better. Is it real grass? Yeah, it's real grass. <laughs> What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. All right, so I've been talking about this one for a couple weeks and we're gonna go ahead and get this done today. I'm gonna actually show you how to blanket spray your lawn using, I'm not gonna call it a cheap pump sprayer because I don't want you to get the cheapest one, but using a fairly cheap pump sprayer from a big box. And again, I want you to realize that what we're doing here is probably not what I would recommend as the number one best way to blanket spray, but it is definitely a place for you to get started. So that way, when you are ready to invest in something that, you know, costs a little bit more like a battery sprayer, you've got some experience to kind of know what you like and what you want to go for and kind of how you want to take your strategy that way. I'm not really sure if I got wrapped around the axle too much on that one. So let's just get right into this. The first thing you do when you want to learn how to use a new sprayer is you need to understand what the output of that sprayer is. How many gallons per minute does it put out? And remember that pretty much everything we do as a standard runs on a 1,000 square feet, one gallon type ratio, meaning one gallon of spray mix covers 1,000 square feet. Remember that as a standard. From there, let's go bucket test and see how long it takes our sprayer to spray out one gallon of material. One thing I don't like is this skinny little mouth. I prefer a much wider mouth. Okay guys, real quick, I just wanna say I'm not necessarily recommending this sprayer. This is just what I got at Home Depot when I was there the other day. And I actually think this is more of a sprayer that's more general purpose for like spraying bleach on your house if you're doing like, a, if you're washing your siding or something like that, or maybe for car washing. But either way, I'm gonna make this work. Uh, and that's what I'm showing you here. This is just something I got off the shelf, bing, bang, boom. Here's minimum viable how to make it work. But again, I'm not recommending this sprayer at all. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain this as clearly as possible without overcomplicating, which is something that I normally do. So the first thing to realize is that this is a manual pump sprayer, meaning you have to manually air it up. So as you start spraying, it's not gonna put out the same volume of spray mix as the air in the tank runs down. So you have to re-pump it at the end of each run. That being said then, we're gonna test how many gallons per minute this thing will flow. And to keep it consistent, we're just gonna do a 16 ounce flow. And we're gonna time how long does it take the sprayer at full pump to put out 16 ounces of material. Here we go. So 
I tested three times and the average came out real close to that 30 second mark. So it takes 30 seconds for this sprayer to put out 16 ounces of spray mix. Now I can see how long it will take to put out an entire gallon. A gallon is 128 ounces. 16 ounces takes 30 seconds. 16 goes into 128 eight times. So eight times 30 seconds is 240 seconds. So it takes 240 seconds for this sprayer to put out one full gallon of spray mix. 240 divided by 60 because there's 60 seconds in a minute is four. So it takes four minutes to put out one gallon of spray mix. So, so we did our bucket test and what that told us was, again, that it takes 30 seconds to spray out 16 ounces. Now we're gonna do some math here and this, I love this because when I was a little kid and I would do this kind of math, I would remember that when it all worked out in the end, I got this like feeling of accomplishment and that's what you're gonna get here. This math is beautiful when it works out and it really will translate into your walk speed and into your legs and into your spray pattern. I promise you it will. And you don't have to think this hard on it for very long. You only have to figure this out. It's like a golf swing, except not near as hard as that. Once you figure it out, you remember it. Think of it like, I guess, riding a bike. Everybody uses that particular terminology, but that's what it is. Once you kind of remember that, once you learn how to ride that bike, it doesn't take you long to get back on it. So, okay, 30 seconds to spray out 16 ounces. So one gallon is 128 ounces, so that means 128 divided by 16 is 8. So it takes 8 30 second periods to put out 1 gallon because remember our standard is 1 gallon covering 1,000 square feet. So that way then 128 divided by 16 is 8, 8 30 second periods. So 30 times 8 is 240 seconds to spray 1,000 square feet. 240 divided by 60 because there's 60 seconds in a minute is 4 minutes. So it takes this sprayer that I have four minutes to put out one gallon of liquid. Okay, now that you know how much the sprayer outputs, now what we wanna do is we wanna get a feel for the walking speed because we need to be able to put out this one gallon and because of the products that you're typically gonna use for a blanket spray here, uh, pre-emergent weed controls, fungicides, insecticides, things like that, even if you have to do a blanket spray, post-emergent weed control, you're gonna wanna get even coverage here, especially with a pre-emergent. Now again, I don't recommend doing a liquid pre-emergent, which would be a water dispersible granule that you mix into water into one gallon and spray out over 1,000 square feet. That's Prodiamine 65 WDG. You guys have seen me do videos on that. It's this stuff right here. Listen, this is not for beginners. I've said this before, I'll say it again. This is highly concentrated. And really, you probably should not do this application with the method I'm showing you here today. You could, I'm not saying you can't, you can. Cause I know when I tell you, you can't, some of you guys take that as a challenge. You know, it just, this is fine. You could do this, but what I recommend is that you learn with this and you, you let this become your starting point. And you do things like, maybe you start by applying something like this, RGS, which, which the mix rate here is three ounces per gallon. One gallon covers 1000 square feet. This is foolproof. This won't hurt anything. If you over apply, under apply, it won't matter. So that's really where I recommend you kind of start if you're just learning. Now, listen, I understand my garage is super dirty here. I get all kinds of comments about that. I mean, this is a working garage here. This is not a studio. We run a podcast out of here. I run a, a YouTube channel out of here. I mow, lawn, my, I mow my lawn out of here. I weed whack out of here. I blow out of here. I smoke cigars in here. This is a working garage. We do a lot in here. Drink beer. But you're right, I do need to clean it up. Speaking of that, um, First episode or first official episode of the podcast came out. I'll link in the description below to that. It's on YouTube, but it's also on iTunes and Spotify and all those other things. That's where we get into detail. Listen, <laughs> all the questions that I get every single week get answered in that podcast. I just ramble them through. I just get through those questions. So if you have questions that are coming in, chances are lots of others do, those get answered on that podcast. They get answered in these videos too. They get answered in my emails. They actually get answered everywhere. So I really try to deliver the content in different ways so that way you guys can choose how you want to get the answers to your questions. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, all right, enough rambling. So the next thing you need to do now that you know what the output of your sprayer is, now what you want to do is mark off a 1,000 square foot area in your lawn so we can do some testing. Okay, so I know my lawn measurements and I recommend if you haven't ever measured your lawn, that's the first thing you need to do before you even watch this video. I'll put a link in the description below that shows you how to measure your lawn. That is the number one most important thing, but either way, I've got a 1,000 square foot area marked off. By the way, this is some signal grass that got zorched by the cold, so probably I should come in here and scrape this out of here because there is no chemical to kill it and resod, but I ain't got no time for that. Here, this is on super view, so it's going to make it look giant, but it's not. It's a thousand square feet, so it goes from that flag over there to the flag up there, 
and then over here to the sidewalk. That's a 1,000 square foot area right there. It's not a perfect square, but it's close enough. Uh, and you're gonna see that too. You know, you're not gonna have everything in perfect squares. You're gonna have curves and everything else. Again, that's why we practice, that's why we learn. And that's the main thing is that we're trying to understand here. The main thing is we're trying to understand the walk speed. Sorry about the lighting on this. Okay, so the very first thing to learn here when you do this is once you have your thousand square foot area walked off, is just visualize it, just understand it. This is what a thousand square foot looks like in the lawn. Because maybe some of you are in construction and you understand you can eyeball a thousand square foot room in a house pretty easy, but it's different out here in the lawn because you have big skies and all kinds of other stuff around you. And, and again, like I say, you have curves and all kinds of other things. So that's the first thing, walk within this thousand square foot, just walk it. Okay, so I went ahead and kept with the charts here. Let me kind of take you through this. So this is the first step. This is your 1,000 square foot area. Now again, I'm doing it in perfect squares here because it's just easier that way. But a few things to understand. So step one, we have a 1,000 square foot area. I want you to remember when you go out and spray that your overlap is tip to tip, okay? You're gonna have to kind of visualize what the width of your spray is. And when you do your successive pass, you're gonna just kiss the tips back and forth, okay? So that's the first thing to know. The second thing that I need you to know is that on our first pass here of 1,000 square feet, we're gonna go up and back, and we should be able to put out a half a gallon in two minutes. But remember, there's one thing that's important. This is not a battery-powered sprayer. You have to pump it. So what you have to do is at the end of every line, you need to pump it at the end of every run. Just give it three good pumps. There's a certain sound it'll get. Um, I can't describe the sound, but you can tell and you can feel it when it's aired up. You'll feel and hear that squeaky sound of the air squeaking through in the inside the tank. You'll hear that. That's usually good enough to keep going. And I, I found with this particular sprayer, it's three pumps. So you're going to walk the line, three pumps, walk the line, three pumps, walk the line, three pumps, up and back. When you do that, you got to realize that this two minutes is going to be longer than that. The reason I want you to understand that it's two minutes is that's a that's a cue in your mind. It's like a mind's eye cue that you have two minutes to do this plus pumps. That's all it's for. You don't really have to do this bucket test in order to make this work, but I want you to do the bucket test because I want you to understand the why behind everything. I want you to understand why we're doing it the way we are. If you don't want to do the bucket test, you can go out here with water and just start walking up and down and do this and figure it out. But I like you to have some reference points and the reference point is two minutes to spray this plus pumps, okay? All right, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna go spray our first pass here. We're gonna visual, we're gonna walk it. We're gonna think in our mind about two minutes plus pumps. And we're gonna go ahead and do that first pass and then we're gonna see how much did we get out? What did we actually pump out from doing our first pass? Again, just water, just walk it nice and easy. Go and see what you get. Also, one thing you're going to find is even though I'm only spraying water today, I still wear my personal protective equipment, which is these rubber gloves here, long sleeves, eye protection, long pants, shoes plus socks. The reason I do that is because I believe you practice like you play. And we are practicing right now, and we want to practice like we play. Plus, other people see me, neighbors and stuff like that. They don't know I'm just spraying water, so, you know, got to keep up appearances, my friends. I went ahead and marked it because you can't read these things at all. So there's the one gallon mark right there, and here's the two gallon mark up here. All right, so I've marked this for myself because these things are impossible to see. But basically what you have is here, here's the one gallon line, here's the one and a half gallon line, and here's the two gallon line. So we're going to fill all the way to the two gallon line, and in our first pass here on our thousand square feet, our goal is to be right here, to have a half a gallon gone on the first pass. Now we're going to do that, and we're going to see where we're at. That's the idea. We're going to see based on just our judging our walk speed and understanding that two minutes of actual spray time plus pumps, we should be at a half a gallon gone. So let's go and see how close we get. But the first thing we want to do is go ahead and fill this up to two full gallons. Now the other thing I'm going to do to give myself a visual is I'm going to put a drop of RGS in here. It's not really enough to do anything to the lawn, but I need to be able to see this. Um, and so we'll do some brown RGS for that. Remember, what I'm adding in here is not part of this training, okay? This is just so I can see things in the tank, all right? If you want to use some marking blue, you can, but I'll tell you that the first time you use marking blue will be the last time you ever use marking blue.
see how I did. Okay, now that it's settled out, you can see I'm actually a little heavy. I went a little heavy handed on that and that's why we do this. Not bad though, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So what this would tell me is, is that I need to speed up my overall walk speed a little bit here, right? On the next pass. Now the other thing to realize is you wanna keep your walk speed consistent from the beginning of your passes to the end. Let's go talk about that a second. Okay, so remember the goal was to get out the 64 ounces in this first pass here, right? Uh, one thing I want to talk about too, and I, I'm pretty sure I did this, I was at least conscious to try, is that when you start up here, whatever speed you start at, you got to commit to that speed all the way through. You don't want to go slow here and then go, woo, speed up, speed up. Don't do that. Commit to it because you want to get a muscle memory of what that speed is. I was a little, like I said, I was a little bit slow. I need to speed up just a hair. And that was a, that was a pretty good walking pace actually, so that's a good thing. So where are we at here? What do we have left? We went just over 64 ounces. Um, so we probably have somewhere around, you know, I don't know, 50 something ounces left. So we'll just write in here that we've got 58 ounces left, something like that. It's a little bit under. You guys get the idea here though, is that I need to go ahead and speed up to go ahead and get the rest out, the rest that's remaining down here. I need to get that out on this pass. And this pass will be going the opposite direction. That's why we're not doing any trim passes, by the way, because you're going to cover your edges because you're doing two different passes here. So that's the idea. I just need to speed up a little bit and I should be pretty golden on my second pass. So let's see how we do. So there we go, the mark, yeah, so I went a little bit too fast that time, see that? I over adjusted, that's why we practice. So pretty close though, so I was a little heavy handed on the first one, now I'm a little light handed on the second one. So if I was to do another practice run, which I'm not going to do today, but that's what you do. If you're going to do another practice run, you just do another one until you get this dialed in. Would I say this is close enough? I mean, maybe. Um, you should get as close as you can for precision, but yeah, I mean, this is not bad at all, of course. You could always do a quick run back over, you know, around the edges with this little extra bit right here. You could definitely use that for edging things out and you'll be okay. Just don't go crazy with it. So there you go, guys. That's how you calibrate your new sprayer. It's It really comes down to practice because once you understand what that walk speed is, I mean, you see how close I got, you know, just by eyeballing. Why? I just I understand what a thousand square feet looks like. I understand what it feels like to spray. I understand what two minutes feels like. I definitely understand what two minutes feels like. But you know, I mean, those are the type of things that you're going to get with experience. And there's no better way to learn than to get a cheap sprayer like this, spray out some RGS or just water, whatever you want, something harmless, and just learn what it feels like to spray and pray. With that, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Don't forget, subscribe to the podcast because there's a lot more detail in there. It's something you can kind of set in your office and just let it go in the background like a radio station. So if you do prefer to consume your content that way, please check that out. Link in the description below or just Google search Lawns Across America. With that, I'm Al Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. I hope this video has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the lawn.